Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar of the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as we are going to continue to remain fairly unsettled as we do have low pressure very close by. It could even be very unsettled on Sunday with a bit of a channel low developing. We've got northwesterly winds pushing in so it's actually pretty chilly outside at the moment with polar maritime air dominating and that has caused quite a few wintry showers especially over higher ground leading to low-lying areas through today we've seen hail and growl pool and even a bit of sleet and snow over some of the moderate hills over the coming days as i said it will remain very unsettled and into next week it could turn slightly milder as those winds veer more of a westerly instead of a north westerly as we've seen the longer range though there definitely are hints of higher pressure trying to build in both the gfs and the ecmwf do have higher pressure building in over the top of us and to our north trying to encourage a bit of an east to south easterly flow now this time of year that could be cold or it could be not so cold be slightly milder with upper air temperatures above freezing well what the current runs are showing are actually more uh, that milder option uh, more than the colder option with the high pressure encouraging more of that air to come from the mediterranean instead of scandinavia where it would be very cold the gm though having none of it with another blast of polar maritime air and very unsettled conditions uh continuing so we'll have to see what those runs are showing in detail in the second half of the video so do remember if you enjoy the videos which you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link is in the description now if you start on the live radar you can see the remnants of those very heavy showers that we have seen throughout today wintry in places and you see they are starting to dissipate away we are getting to the point in the year where the sun shrink during the day does trigger showers or helps to trigger showers that's why they are dying away through this evening as well as the pressure is slowly rising off that initial polar maritime blast still see though some of those showers across northern areas are falling out of snow and even some of these greens further southwards wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of wintriness falling in these especially over moderate hills but for most tonight it's going to be cold temperatures dropping away towards freezing in many areas and already see those lighter blues which is temperatures close to the freezing mark um, over the coming hours now, if you go over the latest UKV, you can see all those showers through this afternoon starting to dissipate away through this evening. And tomorrow, we'll still see an array of showers around, but it won't be anywhere near as unsettled as it has been today. Slightly drier through Saturday evening, and then we see the next low approaching from the southwest. Now, the UKV, as we saw yesterday, had a big wall of rain across southern England. Now, it has tracked this low maybe 50 miles further southwards, which does mean if you're M4 line northwards, you're less likely to see significant rain or rain all day. However, other runs are keeping it further northwards. So this could be one that we're going to have to really pinpoint tomorrow, uh, as at this stage there is still quite a bit of discrepancy between the different runs. But could be a real washout for anywhere across England and Wales through Sunday, depending on the positioning of this low. But if you are across the south coast or generally southern England, then it's looking pretty likely indeed that Sunday is going to be a pretty horrible day. Further northwards, still plenty of showers around, but not this prolonged precipitation. As we get into Monday, still seeing a few showers in a few spots, but actually, uh, for most, especially further north and westwards, we're on a brief ridge of higher pressure, especially in the afternoon, which will give dry conditions. But the next weather front pushes in from the northwest, bringing unsettled conditions back again. But you can see the winds are feeling more and more westerly by this stage, and you see milder air is starting to make an inroad as we do start to see that jet stream go more of a flat westerly instead of the northwest southeast alignment we're seeing right now. So perhaps changing back to a slightly milder westerly flow instead of a cooler northwesterly flow we have at the moment by early to middle of next week. Now, if you look at the max temperatures, you can see through this evening, widely down towards freezing. Most, though, will be freezing or above freezing. I doubt we'll see many below minus one or minus two. The air mass is cold, but it's not bitterly cold. And we are starting to see lengthening days. So you do need those cold air masses to get those really cold overnight temperatures. It's not December or January anymore. We're end of February heading towards March. Remember, the longest day of the year is only in about four months time and i know that sounds a long way away that's 15 16 weeks when you know, give another couple of weeks it'll be really 
uh, coming onto us pretty uh, pretty quickly. So we're not too far away from warmth, um, and that's why it will become increasingly difficult to see harsh or cold overnight temperatures without properly cold upper air temperatures. It is cold, those upper air temperatures at the moment, but it's just not anything bitterly cold. Uh, and that's why temperatures widely around freezing, but not dropping too far below. Saturday afternoon chilly, around the 5 to 9 degree mark, and the same conditions repeat itself for Sunday. Further southwards, it could be colder than this under the precipitation, and again, it will all be dependent on those precipitation rates, which we will have to see tomorrow, really. Uh, hopefully the models do agree come tomorrow afternoon. As we head into Monday, very similar. Further southwards, though, more cloud around, meaning not as much of an overnight frost, but still mid to high single digits during the day. Into Tuesday, again, pretty chilly indeed, maybe even four or five degrees across parts of the Midlands, and that will continue into Wednesday as well. But you start to see double digits returning as we do see that westerly wind come back. Now, if we do have a look at the longer range to see what the GFS and the other models have in store over the coming days and coming weeks, you can see the very strong northwesterly flow at the moment. You can see the low that's going to affect us on Sunday, developing out of the North Atlantic, sliding to our south, becoming this channel low. Really horrible conditions could be seen through Sunday into Monday, but we'll have to pinpoint the track of that low slightly nearer to the time. Beyond that, high pressure tries to move back in, but initially we just see a flat westerly. But then high pressure builds one north, and what happens? We see an east to southeasterly wind. Now we're not firmly under high pressure, so we wouldn't eradicate precipitation, but it would be pretty, pretty dry or a lot drier than it has been recently, and we would likely see slightly milder conditions as well. As you can see, that wind is in from the east, but if you follow the ice piles back, it's coming more from southeast Europe than northeast Europe, which means if we look at the upper air temperatures, it's not that cold. I wouldn't say it's mild, but it's not that cold. Those real cold air masses out towards the northeast are staying there and not getting drawn our way because of the positioning of the high. It still could be chilly, especially overnight. It could be an inversion taking place, but unlikely to be very cold with this sort of pattern. Now, set the GM, not going for that at all. That low pressure slides through on Sunday, and then we go to a flat westerly. But instead of that high pressure building northwards, the Atlantic holds on. And look at this from the GM a huge area of low pressure smashing us from the northwest. Even stronger pulse of polar maritime air. Look at those upper air temperatures. I know it's unlikely to play out exactly like this, but this could bring even widespread snow from the northwest, which is a quite, un a quite unlikely direction to see widespread snow. But the possibility is there with this very strong northwesterly blast. And it wouldn't last all too long, but it could be very cold indeed for a time there with the minus five line moving through even down to minus eight, minus nine in places. So you the temperatures dropping away pretty rapidly as well as the dew points. So I normally say northwesterly winds wouldn't get too excited about them, but if this sort of pattern came off, it could be very wild out there indeed. Not only we've got insanely low pressure around um, the centre of this low is down to 965 millibars or even lower than that, so there'll be plenty of showers around, and then with the very cold air masses, that will uh, produce even larger convective showers, with those convective showers potentially containing wintriness, especially further north and westwards. So yeah, that would be a very interesting pattern indeed, but complete opposite to the other runs we're seeing today. And that's at the Eastern DF, goes along with the GFS. Low pressure slides to our south through the weekend, high pressure tries to build in, but the westy flows hold on, and eventually the low drops down into the Bay of Biscay, and we see a bit more of an easterly flow. However, the high pressure is slightly further north for tits. Although the pattern is very similar to the GFS, because low pressure is closer by, we are going to see potentially more rain with this. Upper air temperatures, similar, but if we do zoom into the United Kingdom, put on precipitation, look at that, lots more showers drawing in from the east because the pressure is lower. So again, small subtle differences like that can make all the difference between dry and 13, 14 degrees, a little bit chilly overnight, and a little bit of a brisk easterly wind, or more like eight or nine degrees feeling like four or five, with loads of heavy showers streaming in from the channel and the North Sea. We will just have to see, but it does follow on from what we were seeing yesterday, which is hints of high pressure building in. So it's good to see that the models are staying a little bit more consistent, uh, but we'll have to see what they agree on in the coming days.
And after you finish by looking at the latest ensembles again, you see this agreement fairly well unsettled over the next week or so. Our price temperature is starting to recover next week, maybe above average for a time. And then a longer term, average to slightly above average precipitation still there, but a little bit less than it has been recently. So again, hints of that higher pressure building in. So you mean temperatures are on an upwards trend. As I've said over the past videos, that is inevitable. We are heading into spring, so temperatures are naturally going to be on the upwards trend average by the start of February, uh, sorry, by the start of March, maybe eight or nine degrees in the day. By the end of spring, i.e. end of May, we're looking at mid to high teens. So we're seeing an almost 10 degree temperature rise throughout the next 12 weeks or so. So almost a degree a week we should be expecting. It won't play out like that exactly, but that's what we should be expecting. So seeing this going from eight or nine degrees up towards 11 or 12 in the next two and a bit of weeks, that is expected. Uh, um, so I wouldn't get too uh, too surprised by this upwards trend. But if we see it, saw anything a bit more drastic, then we'd probably, of course look at that a little bit more uh, in a little more detail. Pressure, you can see it is rising in the longer term, definitely. But there are still some of those lower pressure runs. I think that's similar to the GM. If we actually have a look at the GM individually here, you can see uh, the operation run, the thicker green line is a little bit of an outlier here. And you can see it is a little bit of an outlier on the pressure as well, but not completely, which does give us the indication there is the risk that um, that sort of northwesterly blast does come off. But it, uh, but the other operation runs are not going for it today. And if we do finish by looking at the ECWF ensemble, it's very similar over the course of the next couple of weeks precipitation very high again next week as we see the westy winds return but into early march we could see that high pressure build in around the eight nine ten days time but again the hybrid could build in and we could see a pattern like the east of the F operation run which would actually be very unsettled so it's very much going to be one to watch over the coming days but for the time being it's remaining cool it's remaining very unsettled hopefully though a little bit milder as we head into the middle of next week so as I said, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.